Hello, my name is uh, Joris Lachaise. I'm the director of Transfiana. Uh, and I'm very happy and proud for, for all the, the, the girls from the El Barrio Santa Fe to, to show this film uh, with uh, Daniela Maldonado next week uh, in Berlinal at the, in the Panorama section. Hello and welcome to the 37th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig and today I'm here with director Juris Lachaise to talk about his film Transfariana. Hey Juris, please that you could make Hey, how are you? Hey, oh. uh, thank you so much for Transfariana. I found it to be an incredibly rich film that um, takes place uh, in the transitional period in Colombia uh, after the the peace talks between the government and FARC um, and it tells that that transitional period through the lens of trans identity um, maybe you could tell us how did you come up with the idea for the film um, so I um, I went in Colombia in 2016 then I met uh, Jason and Laura because um, I was uh, Jason and Laura are the main protagonists of the film, mm -hmm. and I was invited to receive an award in um, um, a film festival in Bogota for my previous film. And uh, as part of this festival, an associ association called Corpus in Prison Mentes in Action, dealing with the defense of um, LGBTQI. Um, People uh, in Colombian prisons mm -hmm. proposed me to come uh, to come to the high security prison La Picota to show films and to meet the inmates and uh, exchange with them. And there, the, the discussions were very very engaging. Many of the people present were taking advantage of their um, incarceration to start or restart uh, their studies. Mm -hmm. And most of them in the humanities, and we were talking about cinema, philosophy, politics. And it was in this context that I met uh, Laura and Jason. Mm -hmm. And um, I, before I, um, I heard about uh, their relationship. Laura was um, is a trans trans woman, a former sex worker uh, in the Santa Fe neighborhood. Uh, which is a prostitution and micro-trafficking um, area in the center of Bogota, so-called tol tolerance zone. Mm -hmm. And so Laura, after her capture, had been transferred from the common uh, law district um, to the political prisoners district for security reasons. Mm -hmm. And this is how she met Jason, a park commander and spokesman uh, of the of the guerrilla, uh, the guerrilla. And they become friends, then lovers, and then they get married. Mm -hmm. And this love story between them caused a scandal within the revolutionary organization. Jason's uh, um, Jason's uh, fellow prisoners uh, rose up and sent several protest letters to the. Um, to the FARC general um, uh, secretariat, uh, which was based at the time uh, in Havana, Cuba, where peace agreements were being negotiated with um, the Colombian government. Mm -hmm. And they asked to the FARC leaders the Jason's expulsion from the guerrilla organization. For his part, Jason, a, a good writer and a skillful uh, politician, sent his letter uh, of pleading to Cuba, urging his hierarchy to pronounce uh, to pronounce on his uh, revolution, revolutionary dedication, despite his relationship with Lavra. Yeah. And finally, the park leaders voted in favor of the heretic couple. They wrote a letter addressed to their world membership, uh, all the troops, explaining that they were in a transitional period, that the world was changing and that it was necessary uh, for the party and and uh, for the, the the organization to 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 change their minds and uh, their mentality to evolve with uh, the changes of the society society mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. and far we are signing the peace agreements they were going to lay down weapons 
to become a democratic party, it was necessary to open up the class struggle to discriminate, discriminated minorities and to um, sexual diversity, to bring together rural issues and urban struggles, to, and to make the revolution uh, within the revolution. Mm -hmm. And um, what immediate, immediately appealed to me about the story of this um, marriage and the and the struggles that Jason and Laura had to, to wage to defend their love, their dignity, and their values, um, is that uh, the story tells uh, several things. Uh, first things, uh, uh, what it means uh, to change the paradigm of thinking. Yeah. And, um, and this story, the change of paradigm, is played out on an individual and collective scale. Um, and well, I started to, to to talk about that with Jason and uh, as uh, um, I did philosophy like him, we, we talked about <laughs> about uh, Luis Althusser, etc. And yeah. and then we talked about that with Lara and with the Red Community at Trans Trans. Um, and uh, and we decided together to 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 make this film. Yeah, uh, and that that shows beautifully in that one scene where uh, Jason actually talks about Althusser and 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 Zeno and you know the the this love yeah. for philosophy yeah. actually shows. Yeah, um, I think in, one of into the, the jungle, yeah. yeah after uh, after his liberation. Yes, they are talking about. Uh, about the pre-Socratic and uh, yeah. we had to say uh, Michel Foucault. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I would like to have put all the discussion into the into the movie, but it's <laughs> too person. much. Yeah, <laughs> I think um, one of the, the the most interesting kind of insights that we get is actually to see the relationship between Laura and 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 Jason in prison, actually. Um, how how did you manage to get the material there? Did uh, Jason film all of the material inside the prison, and then just give get it to you on on a uh, USB drive? Or it was it was a large very large process because uh, I made this film during six years, mm -hmm. and um, we spent um, uh, an an entire year a year a uh, whole year. Um, with a trans community network, with a red community, um, the, tr uh, the red, um, sorry, with a trans community network uh, of Santa Fe, which is called La Red, uh, the Red, mm -hmm. trying to get the camera inside the prison. And we wanted to, uh, in this period, we wanted to organize workshops uh, in prison around the peace uh, agreements. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Jason, with Laura, with FARC, with LGBT inmates, uh, a bit like uh, foreign theater. Um, but a part of the administration supported us, while the other was against it, against us. And the film found itself uh, in the center of a political dispute. Mm. Um, in the end, I decided to make this cons constraint uh, not to to be able to to introduce the camera uh, in the in the prison i decided to make this contract an element of the film language of the film grammar yeah and i i, I asked uh, jason to film himself with his phone um at first uh he sends the videos uh, via whatsapp <laughs> then he made longer and longer more and more constructive self-portraits yeah. of his daily life and uh, he asked us to to bring him USB uh, sticks memory, um, and uh, he, he will will then return find. Uh, then I, I I bring the the USB sticks and uh, I bring uh, his images. Mm -hmm. uh, he also gave gave me uh, all the videos that he made internally for for mobilizations, for, for propaganda, and knowing that uh, it will soon be released from prison, mm -hmm. I immediately uh, said to myself that this will uh, structure the film. Yeah. 
the mm. poor quality and poverty of the images uh, made with a cell phone would tell the daily reality of Jason in prison as yeah. a political prisoner. And uh, it would only appear appear in high definition once he was released from prison. That's, uh, that's the story of this uh, of this material. Yeah, yeah. And I, you use different formats in the telling of the film. So, for example, the, the material from prison is one aspect, but you also have uh, dramatic scenes which are filled mm. with a wider scope and, and you have... Um, Uh, archive footage from the from the FARC, um, you know, going through the jungle, actually fighting and shooting. Um, what was the idea behind combining these different formats? No, the action of the film mainly takes place in uh, various territories, mainly three territories. Uh, so La Picota prison, uh, this uh, ICE security prison where uh, Laura is, is still uh, remains uh, for 60 years. Mm -hmm. Bogota Santa Fe neighborhood and the park camps. And um, in the film editing, uh, I wanted to explore a confrontation between individual and collective consciousness in all these spaces. Uh, to do so, I intend to to literally confront my images with Other my footage uh, with other regi re registers, historical archives, news footage, uh, propaganda, prison images, uh, cell phone videos, etc. And this ju juxtaposition of images um, implies a um, certain competition between different narrative regi registers mm -hmm. and thus a relationship of tension between them. And I wanted to connect the thin moments of Uh, our characters' daily uh, lives to the fragments of the um, uh, historical media story, and uh, and uh, but as you said, uh, but on the, on, the, on the other end, the film also embedded in is also embedded in uh, Jason's uh, dream, which is rather uh, uh, which is rather a nightmare and. Yeah. Uh, A dream in which he keeps waking up yeah. in the same dream. This dream for me is a, is a metaphor of the desire for change. The dream of the revolutionary to wake up in a new era, in another paradigm. But the awakening um, is always imminent and only imminent. And mm. it is necessary to fight and to trick, maybe uh, often to, to leave the loop of the dream. Yeah. Yeah. And at the opening of the film, the setting of the dream is a palm grove in the mountains. Mm -hmm. This is the palm grove of uh, Tochecito, mm -hmm. which has a key function in Transfariana. Uh, first of all, because uh, it is a recurring image in the film of a place that redefines itself at each uh, of its occurrences, mm -hmm. changing each time of nature, of function, of meaning. Yeah. And um, sometimes a dream-like uh, landscape serving as a support for the story of Jason's dream, uh, like in the introduction. Sometimes an, an, obs an observation theater for for a couple of characters whose job mm -hmm. we we'll only discover later is to observe the trees. And uh, finally, um, uh, we, we are discovering uh, the true nature of this place that was for 50 years a zone held by FARC army, a resort for the guerrillas, and that botanists were only able to explore at the end of the conflict to discover the largest and most extraordinary uh, concentration of uh, Kindu wax palm trees mm -hmm. uh, in the world. And uh, this tree, which is a national symbol of Colombia, was unwillingly preserved by, uh, by the guerrillas, And the botanists that we see in the film discovered very, very, very recently at the time of the peace agreements that yeah. this tree uh, was trans, yeah. was uh, that it could, against all expectations, change sex. Yeah. Thus, the palm, the palm grove appears in Transferna yeah. as a kind of bridge, uh, bridge zone between the different subjects and multiple 
topographies of the film uh, between the repetitive uh, dream and the changing political reality, between the guerrilla zone and the Santa Fe prostitution district, mm -hmm. between the prison and the wide open spaces of Kindio, between the city and the countryside, etc. Yeah. Uh, it is a convergence of several, several uh, multiple narratives that are articulated in this metaphorical uh, area, which is both uh, uh, like a jewel box and a fossil, mm -hmm. a place that parad paradoxically uh, the world has preserved from, from the, tur the tourism, from the depredation and the exploitation of uh, of um, uh, gold mines mm -hmm. and whose fascinating natural bio biodiversity resonates um, uh, with the emergence of a new form of cultural, social, and political diversity in Colombian society. Yeah, and I've, I've found that was an incredible scene because it's such a coincidence, it's such a such a moment of beauty to see how how that that preserved uh, wax palm tree actually embodies kind of the spirit of the of the social change mm. that is happening in in Colombia at that moment. But um, and for me, for me, it was like a brief, a brief um, in the end in Bogota and and the activities of Jason uh, running. Uh, in all the parts of the country yeah. uh, and suddenly to be to be in this uh, beautiful landscape very silent and uh, it was uh, yeah uh, like a relief yeah, yeah. <laughs> beautiful um i think at at the center of the film there is um this well there is the 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 trans issue i think maybe just for people who have never you know um who who are not so familiar with trans issues in in colombia maybe you can tell the people what what the state of trans issues in colombia or specifically within farc w where they are right now uh for the situation uh of the trans in Colombia, um, on paper, we can say that Colombia is one of the most advanced Latin America countries in terms of recognizing the rights of LGBTI people. Mm -hmm. Homosexuality has been de um, decriminalized since the early in, uh, 80s, and the new constitution of um, uh, 1991 uh, is perhaps one of the most progressive on the continent and perhaps uh, in the world in terms of social, ecological, and uh, minority uh, recognition. But in reality, uh, the mentality and the political context are mostly very conservative, sexist, homophobic, and transphobic. Even if the new government of Gustavo Petro and Francia Marquez uh, the first left-wing government in the history of the Colombian Republic mm -hmm. brings uh, this year, uh, last year, uh, great hopes. Um, but uh, trans people are still um, are still victims of uh, violence and discrimination, and trans women, often uh, assigned to sex work, continue to be murdered. And um, Laura. In the film was sentenced to 65 years in prison and yet she didn't uh, she didn't murder or mm -hmm. hurt anyone she was simply the bait in a group of delinquents and in the in the santa fe when she was a prostitute mm -hmm. and uh whatever crimes uh she may have committed no one is sentenced to a lifetime in prison and uh, her sentence was aggravated by her trans status yeah. The judge didn't not uh, hide it, and it is clearly um, a sexist and gender discrimination. Yeah. A few weeks ago, I went to um, to show the film uh, to the protagonist of the film in Bogota at the Cinematheque uh, before presenting it in Berlin. And we have already started with the girls of the Santa Fe, with Lulu, with uh, uh, Lulu is Daniela Maldonado. She's the protagonist. Uh, 
of the film with a famous trans activist uh, leader in Colombia. Um, as well with the uh, Colombian trans activist uh, Giovanna Rincon, we are preparing a strategy to make Lara an emblematic uh, figure mm -hmm. to make noise about our case thanks to the film and to go up, if necessary, to the, to the uh, Inter-American Court of Human Rights mm -hmm. and to the presidency uh, of the Colombian Republic. Um, yeah. But we have invited Lulu, donc Daniela Maldonado, to come to the Berlinale and I guess she will be more precise and more representative than, than I am to talk about the condition of trans people in Colombia. Yeah. So thank you again for, for the film and for thank taking you. the time. Thank you.